Welcome back. My name is Claire. I am the founder of Student RDH and Smarter DA Dental Assisting Dental Hygiene Boards Review. Let's jump again into our panoramic radiograph landmark. This is part three. You have number one here and is, it is indicating this part, this line. What would that be? Well, this is going to be the tongue actually. If you don't put the tongue on the roof of the mouth and form like an L shape towards the tip of the palate, you will have this uh, radiolucency, meaning the dark area, because this is actually the airspace. So that's why we ask our patient to swallow first and then put the tip of the tongue to the palate and stay there until the x-ray, the panoramic radiograph is done. So this is actually just the border of the tongue. Now let's look at number two. Number two is this guy over here, this loosen area, radio loosen. This is the hard palette. You can see I highlighted in the same orange over here and the soft palette is here, but this area, the hard palette, because it is bone, it is denser. That's why it is radio opaque. And this is the hard palette. Okay, now let's jump to number three. Number three is this area that looks like a hook, that looks like a U. What would that be? So there's one thing you have to look here. There's also this area and this area. Now you don't, you have to particularly look at this area that's a little more towards the midline. That's, that is radio opaque, meaning a little wider. And that is above the maxillary molars. This is what is called the zygomatic process. A process is something that is sticking out, okay? This area is the zygomatic process. Can you see kind of this U shape here? It is reflected here, of course, a little different because this is the panoramic image. It's a 2D of a 3D, so it will look a little different, but you can see the same pattern over here. Now, you might go to your examination school, board examination, see that this U shape looks a little different with every panoramic images, but I want you to remember that this is usually located right above the maxillary molars, and that is not as um, towards the side as this area, which is uh, probably the max, uh, maxillary sinus, the lateral walls, and it doesn't come all the way down like this, because this is again the floor of the maxillary sinus. I hope this makes sense. Let's jump to number four. So number four is this area. Okay, I try to highlight this whole entire area. This is the bottom of the orbit. You can see your eyeball would be here and the bottom here it is formed by many different bones, but you just have to remember that it looks like this. And obviously it means higher up. There's no other structure that look like just a U or round that is so higher up. So you can imagine the eyes over here, the nose over here, and uh, your cheekbone, which is the zygomatic process over here. Now let's look at number oh, five, sorry, which was the spine. If the patient is curving or is biting a little too forward, so in your bite block, there is a notch. Ask the patient to put their anterior teeth right here because if they are biting a little more forward like that, the spine will be in the way and it would be captured on both sides. So this area is the spine. Let's look at number six now. Number six is this kind of pointy area. What is this? This is called the styloid process. Now, the way I remember uh, stylo in French, it actually means pen. And it looks like a pen, a pointy pen. If you have another memory trick, you know, please feel free to use it. But this pointy area, is going to serve as an attachment for uh, different ligaments towards the jaw. So this point area that is a little less visible on this side is over here. Now let's look at number seven. Number seven is this area. So you first have to see the condyle. The condyle is the area here in the mandible that articulates with the temporal bone to form the TMJ. The area before 
this condyle on the temporal bone is called the articular eminence. Eminence means it's protruded. The reason why there's here is that when it articulates, so let's draw it again. When you have this eminence and then this is a fossa and you have this conda over here, when you open and close your mouth, this is going to rotate and move. This area is a little bump that prevents this conda to move way too forward because if you do that, you're going to have uh, a log jaw, you're going to dislocate your mandible. So this is a little hump. It's called the articulate eminence. This is not part of the mandible, it's actually part of this temporal bone. Number eight, so we've seen this, we located this conda, now we are looking at this area. This area is actually where the conda is fitting into. It looks a little different because, again, this panoramic image is a 2D of a 3D version, so it's a little expanded. But this area is called the glenoid fossa. Fossa is an area that is dipping, and this would be fitting right into this. And this is where you have the disc, and together it forms the TMJ. Now, I just want to recap really quickly. So number one, we had this dark area. This is the border of the tongue. Number two, we had this hard palate that looks radio opaque. Number three, we have this U-shaped uh, radio opaque area that is called the zygomatic process. Number four, we have those orbits, the bottom of the orbits. And number five, we had the spine. Number six, over here, we had this pointy area that's called the styloid process. And number seven, we had this little bump. It's called the articular eminence. And number eight, we have this area that fits right with the condyle that is called the glenoid fossa. I hope all this makes sense that we had review part one, two, and three. If you haven't watched them, just go back. It takes five minutes and you will know everything about the panoramic radiograph, how to detect those landmarks. Thank you. Get up.